In today's video, we're diving into a service stack template called Razor SSG that uses .NET Razor to enable static site generation features to make it easy to create content-heavy applications that can be developed, tested, and managed from your browser with GitHub Codespaces. The Razor SSG template is ideal for product websites, blogs, portfolios, and many other content-heavy use cases. In this video, we will guide you through customizing and extending this template and show you how it can all be done from just a browser with GitHub Codespaces. To get started, let's navigate to the Razor SSG repository under the Netcore Templates GitHub organization, link in the description. In the top right corner, click the Use This Template button to create your own repository of the template. Once your repository is created, the built-in GitHub Actions will automatically build the site, making it ready for use with GitHub Pages. After the initial build process, head over to the repository settings and configure your pages settings to publish the static site using the gh-pages branch. Saving your settings will trigger another GitHub Actions job that publishes this branch to the default GitHub Pages hosting path. Once completed, your static site will be hosted at your GitHub username, github.io forward slash the repository name. And now, with any changes you make to your GitHub repository, your changes will be automatically pushed and published to this hosted GitHub Pages site. So now we have an automated deployment process, let's dive into the template's features. The Razor SSG template is designed to facilitate content management on the go, and GitHub Codespaces is a perfect companion for this purpose. With its generous free tier, you can manage personal sites or even early stage commercial products without incurring additional costs. And best of all, it greatly simplifies the setup of your development environment and it's accessible straight from a browser from any device. GitHub Codespaces provides a browser-based version of Visual Studio Code, allowing you to edit your application, test and preview your content and content pipeline on the go. The template primarily uses Markdown for content authoring, offering developers a familiar and customizable format for various page types. Using the Run and Debug tab on the left-hand side, we can run and debug our application like any other project in VS Code. You can then personalize your code space with your preferred extensions, and VS Code will recommend them as you use different features. Here we are installing the .NET Watch Attach extension for a better debug experience. Now that our application is running, we have a place to preview our changes quickly as GitHub Codespaces hosts our application, making it available at a public URL secured to your GitHub account. The Razor SSG template is simplified to a single .NET project containing all of the Markdown content pipelines. Opening the MyApp project reveals a series of c -sharp files prefixed with Markdown, which represents the different Markdown content pipelines that generate the static pages for your site. These content pipelines are configured in the configure.ssg.cs file, pointing to specific directories in your project that are home to the various types of Markdown content. The Markdown content is then rendered and formatted from these content pipelines using Razor pages that either use the render static attribute or implement the iRender static interface, which we'll talk about more later. This process is kicked off from the pre render app task, which is registered in your configure.ssg.cs file and can be run using the command line. In this tutorial, we will examine the What's New page as an example of how the content pipelines work. The render static attribute informs the pre-render task that this page should be statically rendered. The markdown What's New pipeline is injected into the page, which has been populated with the data from our markdown files in the underscore What's New directory. We can see how this data is populated in the load from method in the markdown what's new class. 
In this case, a subdirectory with the date prefix is being used with the name to group features. Each feature has its own markdown file with front matter, the date at the top of the file, and the content below. Our What's New Razor page then uses all that data from the markdown files in the underscore What's New directory to render this single Tailwind styled HTML What's New page. But of course, we can render multiple pages with various views of the same markdown data as well. So what if you want a new page per markdown file that also has a parent navigation page? This is common for content like blog posts. We can walk through the markdown.blog pipeline to see how this works in practice. Starting in the configure.ssg.cs file, we can see our app host registers and uses the markdown blog content pipeline by reading the underscore posts directory. This directory contains a flat list of markdown files using a date prefix and a name. These markdown files also have some additional front matter variables as well, like tags, summary, and author. The content pipeline then kicks off via the load from method as well, using the overridden load method to populate our markdown file info instance with data from each file. The same process as the what's new example. If we look at our blog.cshtml file again, we are injecting our populated content pipeline into the page and using that data to render a single blog landing page. But if we also have a look in our posts directory, we have five different cshtml pages, all using the markdown blog data. Where we want to generate a page per post, we have a new post model that is populated from the markdown blog content to pick out the data we want to use for that specific page instance. For the posts page, we're using a slug string as an identifier for which markdown page should be rendered. A slug is a unique string in the URL we can use to identify the resource to fetch a specific markdown file for the post model. If we go back to look at the name of these markdown files, the name is a date prefix followed by this unique slug string. With this information, our application can render each page as required when developing or authoring content for fast previews. During static site generation, the iRender static interface implementation is used by the pipeline so that the same post model is used for both development and static site generation. The result of the getStaticProps method determines how many pages are generated since it populates the model for the page. For example, if we run our pre-render task from our package.json file, we get a dist folder. In this folder under the post directory, we can see author, tagged, and year subfolders, as well as a HTML file for each post. Opening up the year, we can see HTML files are named by the different year, since the model has a slug value as well, which is used in the page route. So to recap, the Markdown blog content pipeline reads all the Markdown files from a specific directory, and this is registered in our application IOC container. Razor pages are then created to present that content in different ways. The render static attribute and iRender static interface are then used on the Razor pages to inform the static generation how it will create HTML files from the input Markdown data. And while our application is running, we can quickly make changes and refresh our hosted application that's running to see those changes instantly. To help us further understand this process and the flow of data, let's extend the template to have a different way of presenting YouTube channel content that lets us reuse and organize our videos specifically for the site we are building. First, we will create our own Markdown content pipeline by inheriting from the Markdown Pages base class. The Markdown File Info class contains data from our Markdown files, so if you want to customize what front matter to have on your Markdown files, you can add properties to this or another class that inherits off Markdown File base to utilize that data on your Razor pages. First, we will implement a method to load our markdown files from a path. 
And here is where you can create conventions of your own where the naming and location of your markdown files can inform how your content is used. In this case, we will create additional folders to group our related video content together to make it easier to render videos on a single topic. As an example, here are two videos on auto query grouped together by an auto query folder where each video is getting its own markdown file. Back in the load from method, we can traverse the files in our content folder structure and populate our markdown file info instances. Notice here we're using the generic load method from our base class to read and populate data from each of our markdown files. These are already built into the template to make customization easier. Then, opening configure.ssg.cs file, we will want to register our pipeline as a singleton in configure services and use that singleton to call load from, pointing to where we will store our markdown files for this specific content pipeline. You will also want to make sure your content pipeline can read from virtual files and we can do this by adding our new videos instance to the markdown features array here. Now that our content is being read and injected into our application IOC, let's look at rendering that data. In this case, we want to render the videos as groups that we can then reuse in different pages of our application. To do this, we will first create a video group razor page with a video group model that has all the things we want to relate to a specific group of videos. A title, summary, group name, a learn more link, and some overridable styles. This is just a partial view that we will put on our main index page for now and elsewhere in our application later. When we want to use this partial view, we can use the html.partialAsync method passing in a video group model. The group string is what we want to use to match to our content folders. We specify auto query and we will render all the content in that folder. So if we want to change this content or move it around, we are only dealing with markdown and files, making it a lot more accessible for non-developers to manage content for our website. This increased accessibility combined with the use of GitHub code spaces means we can do our editing from the convenience of a device like an iPad. Here I am using an iPad Air with two tabs open to author changes and preview the results on another tab. As soon as I am happy with the content, I can commit my changes and they will be live on the site. There are also quality of life features for our blog post functionality like drafts and future dates if you want more control over publishing. Lastly, this template also benefits from JavaScript modules and Vue 3 components. When we need to add that client-side interactivity to our site, we can use modern JavaScript modules and the Vue 3 framework to make this a lot easier to maintain. Each page is still statically rendered, giving us the benefit of better SEO and we have a way of managing our content to test it quickly and enhance with interactivity where needed. By using the combination of Razor, Markdown and Vue 3, we can create and manage large content heavy sites with custom functionality and do so with just GitHub and a browser. GitHub Code Spaces enables us to test, develop, author, and deploy everything we need for our application from the convenience of our favorite device and brings down those barriers of entry to creativity, enabling you to control the whole workflow when inspiration happens to strike. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. If you want to know more, check out our other videos and join us in the ServiceStack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. ServiceStack is free for individuals and open source projects, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.